Hello, everyone. Uh, so I get a lot of questions for the lab on the torque uh, on what to do for the full lab report. So I uh, want to just uh, have a quick walk through it uh, so I can all uh, so you all can hopefully do this as good as possible. So uh, as usual, the abstract is going to be done at the end. It's the most difficult thing. Uh, just make sure uh, that it has all the main things and the main conclusions on it. Now for the introduction, uh, I want a theoretical background on just tell me in your words, what is torque and how do we calculate it based on a force that is causing it. Then what is the rotation equilibrium? Uh, please look it up in a book or uh, I have also a video uh, where I'm talking about the rotation equilibrium. As usual on the physics wiki, uh, there are the links. So you have here introduction to rotation equilibrium, uh, a YouTube video uh, that will include what is the rotation equilibrium. And next one is solve the situation for the problems A, B and C. Uh, without numbers. So the first step is you do one free body diagram and the one free body diagram should do it for all. Uh, all you have to do is instead of having 90 degrees as an angle, you write theta uh, for the angle for, for the spring force and therefore it could be used for all three of them. Now the free body diagrams for torque, they're slightly different than the traditional free body diagrams. So I suggest you're watching uh, the second video here, uh, the example with the beam hanging mass, uh, the main difference is that we will need, need now to uh, draw the object in its original dimensions and select the pivot point, like the point where it's turning around. Now for your beam in the lab, it's easy, like you know exactly where the pivot was, was the hinge in the middle. And then you draw the forces where they act actually act. So you would, in your case, you would have the spring force on one side, the force of gravity uh, from the hanging mass on the other side. Uh, you would have the force of gravity on the beam directly on, on the pivot, on the hinge, and you would have the normal force from the hinge up uh, on the pivot exactly. So those two are acting on the pivot will not cause any torque, only the left and right one which then I would ask you to try to find a relation between those two. So you calculate the torque of the left one plus the torque of the right one it should be equal to zero. And then you solve it for uh, the force of the spring is equal to what? So kind of figure out what does the force of the spring depend on? And then you should get something, the force of the spring on the left side is equal to on the right side, you should have Rm, the distance from the mass, you should have Rs, the distance of the spring, and you should have F, uh, the force of the mass as well. And then you will use this later on in the discussion uh, to compare uh, what you get, if it's linear or not. And so that was number three, where you find the relationships. So is it linear depending? So if Fs is for example, if you get something like Fs equals three times Rm, that will be linear or like some other factor A times Rm. If it's A divided Rm, then it's definitely not linear. So this is what I want here. Uh, method, uh, I think you'll fold the method. You could just uh, do the reference to it. Uh, change the mass if you change the mass. Data results. Uh, you copy your data in. Maybe you want to add up the calculations uh, that you do in the analysis. So we're going to get to that in a second. So copy the contents of your Excel sheet in your office document, blah, 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 as usually uh, you clean it up a bit. And now for the discussion analysis, uh, you tell me for each part if the relation is uh, directly proportional, indirectly proportional, quadratic, linear, whatever it is. So I'm going to go here in one of your team's data. For example, this one here kind of looks linear. So we could make the hypothesis that it is linear. 
this one definitely does not look linear. So don't tell me that it's linear. Like try to figure out how we call this type of, of flow. Now, if it is linear, so in this case, definitely not for part B, if it is linear, I want you to figure out the slope and the uncertainty of the slope. You can do a trend line. With the trend line, it will give you the slope, but not the uncertainty of the slope. But Excel can actually do this uh, very well. So uh, you need some additional formula, uh, which you can find on my uh, Formulas and Constants for College Physics, which you have in, in, in Lea. Just scroll down here somewhere, na -na 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 -na, somewhere here, you have the slope. So this is the formula that you have to copy in. So for the slope itself, so first you will need the y values and then the x values. So if I go here for the slope equals this line, this, and instead of the y values, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select the y values, which in this case were the fs. And for the x values, I'm going to select what was the x is. So here was the rm. So I'm going to get all of those. Hit enter. And here's my slope 12.26. If you add a trend line, you can double check uh, if it actually uh, is correct or if the trend line gives you the same thing. Uh, chart, where to add the trend line? Well, it depends where, where we actually is. So you check with your trend line if you actually get the right number. Then uncertainty of the slope, and we go back to the formulas. Uncertainty of the slope is this one here. I copy, put it in here, equals that. And then again, y values is the y values for my graph. So all of these and the x values, in this case, were all of these. Oh, and here we have the uncertainty. And then as usual, you run this to useful amount of significant figures. So we take those two and we're gonna be chopping, chopping, chopping. Where is my chopping? Here, chop, 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 chop. So I would report here, I have a slope of 12.3 uh, times 0 0.3. I can actually double the 12.3, sorry, plus minus 0 0.3. I can double check quickly if it's correct. So if I take any x number, let's say 0 0.48 uh, times my slope, I should, getting, should be getting the fn uh, equals this times uh, this 5.9. So if I do this for all the numbers, I can compare what my theoretical values would have been. Oh, I made a mistake here. Okay, of course I need to put the dollar sign in. So this last step is just a little extra. So you can see how close you were with your actual measurements if we would assume the slope. Here we go. So my slope is here. The uncertainty of the slope is there. So again, only do this if it's linear. There's absolutely no point of doing that for something that is not linear. Now, it really depends on your data. This is definitely not linear, so don't do it. This one here, difficult to tell, right? Yeah, look at the introduction uh, in your part for the introduction, see if it should be linear on sine of the angle. It's not the dependence on the angle itself, it's on sine of the angle that I'm looking for, okay? So let's go back to the Word document. So that's what you do here. And then in the conclusion, uh, you repeat from the introduction what the work does depend on. Uh, how does it depend on the angle? How does it depend on, on, on the distance, et cetera, et cetera. So he just explained me the formula for torque. Here, you tell me if the experimental data agree with the predictions. Uh, what I mean, the predictions, if something is linear or not. So you have your graph and you have your prediction from the introduction, what it should be. In the case that it is linear, you should also tell me if, it, if the slopes within uncertainty uh, agreed for the linear case. And then as usual, what could be improved? Uh, just keep in mind, better tools might not be uh, the answer in all cases. Often it is the method that makes the difference. So can you think of something that we can change in the method 
uh, to make it better. And then references as usual, that is uh, the Doma thing. And don't forget to fill in uh, your full lab report self uh, evaluation before submitting it for peer feedback. Uh, I think that's it more or less. If you have more questions, uh, send me a mail. I'm going to try to answer them. Bye-bye.